Hi everyone, Teddy Baldessar here. And in this video, we are going to be looking at how to build a collection for $8,000. So if you're not familiar with this series, this is where we look at different ways of building a collection based on different buying personas. We have different types of philosophies as you're approaching collecting and just showing different routes that you can take when building a collection for a specific budget. Now, this is not supposed to be a definitive way of showing the best way of always collecting because at the end of the day, this is all subjective. How you decide to build your collection really is up to you. But this is really just how to show how you can maximize your dollar in a variety of different ways and doing it with some fun in the process. So before we jump in and look at the personas, if you like this price category of $8,000 and also wanna look at how can you maximize that in this price range, maybe just putting it all into one watch, I have a great article looking at some of the top picks for watches under $10,000 on the market, primarily looking at that price segment of $5,000 to $10,000, have a wide selection of models there from a wide variety of brands. So I definitely would recommend checking that out before we dive into the video here today, but I'll have a link to that in the description down below. So for our personas here, we first have the one watch collection. This is the type of person that tries to find that one watch that can really address all their needs and finds joy in the simplicity for reaching for the same watch every day. Persona two is the check off the boxes individual. This type of collector needs to have a watch for every type of scenario, even if one of those scenarios never really happens. Persona three is the hipster. This type of collector can't stand having something mainstream, so they spend the majority of their time picking up boutique watches and micro brands. Persona four is the diver fanatic. This collector is fascinated and only with the world of dive watches. Persona 5 is the perfect duo. This is the collector that likes simplicity but could never settle for just one watch. They need to opt for the balance of a dress and sports everyday piece. Persona 6 is the formal collector. This individual either needs to dress up in formal attire every day for their job or value simplicity. They will require at least two dress watches to match their many outfits. And then you have Persona 7, the three watch collection. This collector likes having the three perfect watches to cover all their bases, one dress, one every day, and one sports. Now for our first category here, we have the persona that is really focused around that one watch collection. So how can you maximize for around $8,000, give or take, maybe plus or minus a few hundred dollars? What's the best you can really find here? So I wanna try to pinpoint things that we haven't mentioned in previous videos and also try to get right around $8,000 and also not deal with some of the secondary market premiums that some watch might, watches might demand uh, that are priced around here. So. $8,000 is kind of a tricky segment because I find more luxury brands are going to, at least the mainstays or the fixtures in the luxury segment are more positioned around $5,000, $6,000, and even $7,000. There's a gap and then it starts to become more apparent again around $9,500 to around $11,000, $12,000. So it's like this gap of where maybe some people aren't necessarily considering it and they just kind of stretch, okay, let's just spend $10,000, that's my budget. So 8,000 is a little bit tough, but I think the first one here is gonna be with Zenith and the DeFi Skyline. So you may have previously seen the DeFi Classic, which was a watch that I really did enjoy. It was one of my favorite pieces uh, from Zenith. And now this is more of the successor to this collection. What's notable here, stainless steel case, 41 millimeters, 11.7 millimeters in thickness, very wearable on the wrist. I would say this wears closer to a 40 millimeter case. Uh, it is gonna be more dense than the previous DeFi Classic. Uh, 100 meters of water resistance, but uh, the big note is going to be the El Primero 3600 base movement, the 3620 here. And if you're not familiar with that movement, that was first unveiled with the Chronomaster Sport and has that 10th of a second uh, ability to track with the chronograph uh, movement. And again, this is a essentially a chronograph architecture being repurposed in a three hand watch. And the other notable thing about the use of this is that you're getting a 10th uh, or 10 second display with that sub seconds. Now, is this kind of quirky and goofy? Yeah, I don't know if this is really that practical, but it is still an interesting watch. I think this also has a way uh, a better or improved type of on-the-fly adjustment with the bracelet and the straps. This was one of the drawbacks to the previous DeFi Classic. This is much more seamless with the on-the-fly adjustment and uh, is going to be, for this integrated type of style watch, probably one of the best options that you're going to find sub $10,000. You have GP with their Laureato that's going to be north of that uh, $10,000 price point. But I would say under this segment, if you wanna stretch, maybe jump up from a lot of the brands that are maybe around that two to $3,000 price point, and then you have the PRX down below, this would be probably the best and most appropriate way of doing it for $8,000. So now with the next option here, just north of $8,000, you have the JLC Polaris. This is certainly another sleeper pick and a watch that is right around this $8,000 price range that I enjoy 
41 millimeter case, 11.1 millimeter thickness, and a 47.2 millimeter lug to lug distance. So this is gonna wear closer to a 40 millimeter case in actuality. 100 meters of water resistance, that JLC 898E1 movement on the inside. This is going to be for me a watch that is kind of in the middle ground of what it's trying to figure out and trying to be. It's not fully stepping into the former Polaris DNA. If you look at some of like the Memovox models and uh, the dive watch pedigree that this collection certainly does have, it's more um, moving into that everyday piece, which I think if you are somebody, uh, somebody that wants something more refined, elegant, with some fusion of sports watch DNA, this is a nice middle ground to find from a brand that of course has a great reputation. When you're talking about this uh, dollar amount for around $8,000, getting into a really solid watch from a brand that perhaps is underappreciated, as crazy as it is to say that now, just given the favor going to many of the sports watches in the market. This is unconventional, different, but certainly class uh, that you can have on your wrist. I don't think the Polaris line has it fully figured out yet. I don't think it's fully optimized for JLC. I have a full video on this watch, but still a great one to consider and one that maybe not everyone is going to consider. So now for this next persona, we have the check off the boxes person and this type of buyer. They have a select amount of holes that they want to fit all of their watch needs potentially within. So I have a variety of different styles that I want to include in this list. First being this more casual, everyday style of uh, watch, maybe sports oriented. And for this, I want something that's going to be versatile. It can also have some upside when it comes to water resistance and maybe not looking completely out of place with some level of formal attire. Maybe you don't wanna wear this, of course, with a tuxedo, but if you had to wear like a sports coat or something of the sort, you could absolutely pull it off. And here I have the Bomb and Mercier Riviera. So this is a new collection of models from a Bomb and Mercier and is basically an answer to much of this integrated style bracelet sports watch that of course is a huge craze. Now this is available in two different styles when it comes to the movement inside. For one, you can get a basic Salita movement that's going to be closer to the $2,000 price range. And then for slightly more, around $1,000 more, you can start getting into those Balmatic movements that are gonna have that five-day power reserve. Now, this is where I think things can get rather interesting because when you look at the market, I would say now, even with the advancement in the standard of power reserve, uh, looking across the board, I would say the standard is probably between 70 to 80 hours. You look what Tudor's doing with their ownership of Kinesi and their 70 hour power reserves, uh, Swatch Group with the 80 hour power reserves for many of their watches, or Longines with their uh, proprietary movements that they're working on with Etta, around 70 plus hours there. This is looking at five days. So this is for that price segment, one of the leaders, variety of dial colors to choose from. This is a model that's maybe a little bit overlooked. It is in a very saturated part of the market when it comes to these style of sports watches, but for fitting that mold every day, maybe not gonna look out of place in a wide variety of scenarios. I think this is kind of what you want for that core backbone of your collection. And also keeping in mind, you have to really spread out that $8,000 budget. So we don't wanna put too much into this segment. Now let's do something from the dress category and try to make it drastically different. I think for this, I want something that leans very far into some elements of elegance, but also a different type of shape and case. So I wanna go with the Oris Rectangular. So you have a variety of different colors that you can choose from here. Uh, you could go for something that's going to be more extravagant and eye-catching with some ox blood or something of that sort, but then you could go for something more muted with the blue tone. It really does come down to you, but I find these as being a great alternative to the Musté Cartiers that we've seen recently uh, relaunched, uh, coming in a price segment underneath $2,000. You do get a smaller case here, so uh, 25.5 millimeters with the case size went across, and then a lug to lug of 38 millimeters. So this is a smaller watch, also not overstepping too much in the thickness department. This is gonna slide underneath a wide variety of dress cuffs. We're looking at 10.2 millimeters for that thickness. This is a new line for Oris in 2022, and I think is a nice point of separation from the other watches that we're going to uh, have in this collection. Now for the dive watch part of the check off the boxes, uh, just given some of the money that I put in these two other watches, I have to try to get it around a thousand bucks. And the one here also really transitioning in the style too, I wanna go for something from Seiko and that for me is the SPB 143. I know I have mentioned this watch in some previous episodes or uh, parts of this series, but it is a really, awesome watch when it comes to wearability and really pulling from that 62 mass uh, design from 1965 and of course bringing it to the contemporary market in a wearable case. Although you are paying more here compared to your general prospects diver from Seiko, 
I do think there are subtle hints of refinement that allow it to be elevated, but really at the end of the day, what you're paying for here is I think some really good design, slight improvements with the bracelet, the movement, and uh, some of just the package and utility of that um, elapsed time bezel and the rotation. It's much more crisp than those entry level options. And then putting that in a package that I think enthusiasts will really like. And it certainly does seem that that is going to fit the mold of what this one is going for. 200 meters of water resistance, wearable case at 40.5 millimeters that wears actually smaller than that. I would say it wears closer to uh, I'd say around a 39 and a half to 40 millimeter case being true there. And an automatic Seiko 6R35 movement on the inside with that elevated 70 hour power reserve to go along with everything else. Now for our chronograph. So there's a couple of chronographs that we could go for here. I wanted to try to stretch as much as I could with the budget, but also feature something that's maybe fresh and new. There could be some overlap here with the Riviera, but I do like this watch. I think many people have been talking about this watch and that is with the Tissot PRX. Chronograph. So depending on what colors we've chosen, I think that could dictate which one of these watches you go for. I just think the blue is just striking in my favorite of the two dial configurations. 42 millimeter case. I will say that on my wrist, despite it being of course a larger watch, it does wear in a way that I didn't find it completely overbearing because it does give off this kind of Royal Oak offshore combination with the Rolex Oyster cards and bringing those things together. And when you factor in that that is type of the, the approach here with the chronograph movement on the inside, I think you're able to look past maybe some of the uh, wearability aspects of a piece that certainly is going for that sporty look. It's gonna wear the full 42 millimeters without question, if not slightly larger than that. So just keep that in mind. 100 meters of water resistance. You also have an Eta Valjoux movement on the inside, the 7753 with an extended power reserve. Sapphire crystal, amazing bracelet on this, even at this price segment. It's still refined and does the job, no question about it. But to me, bringing the PRX into a chronograph format, this just looks fantastic. And then for our last category here for this check off the boxes individual, we have the beater or digital watch. I wanted to actually go for a dive watch that could kind of complement what maybe that Seiko was representing, but doing it at a lesser price tier that we don't necessarily have to worry about as much. And that is going to be the Citizen Promaster dive watch automatic now. So this is big news for the Promaster collection. As you may uh, know, many of those Promasters or those divers in the past were really more of those JDM models that wouldn't necessarily be focused for the US market or different markets around the globe. This is now becoming available in some different markets outside of Japan. So great to see that. Price range is starting at around $550. Case size is 44 millimeters, but that lug to lug dimension allows us one actually on the wrist it's like a 40 and a half to 41 millimeters when you actually have this one strapped on. The clasp is unconventional, ISO uh, diver compliant here, and 200 meters of water resistance in the process. Good price point. I like the looks, variety of dial colors to choose from. I think these were long awaited for many uh, collectors and fans of Citizen. So I think this is a good way to round out and be a watch that you don't have to necessarily worry about to the same degree as some of those other watches in the collection and being that true beater and watch that you can just have fun with on a day, move to the beach or uh, just running around, uh, you know, just doing some errands or something of that sort. Now for our next category, we have the hipster segment. And for our first watch within the hipster segment, I wanna look at something from a brand known as Aquastar. And this is a brand that maybe most people don't consider, but I think it would be perfect for this type of persona. The watch here is the Deep Star Chronograph. This is gonna be a nice hybrid of getting your chronograph, checking off the box there, as well getting a, a, some diver uh, background and uh, pedigree here. Uh, this is best known for being worn by Jacques Cousteau's crew, or at least Aquastar was uh, back in the mid 20th century. Case size here, 40.5 millimeters, gonna be on the thicker side of things. And you're factoring in casing up a Valjoux movement on the inside with 200 meters of water resistance. I guess that's to be expected. Lug to lug is 49 millimeters. So going to wear slightly larger than that 40.5 millimeter format, probably closer to a 41. But I really like the design of this. It is going to be thick. Uh, you get that Valjoux based caliber modified by Le Joux Pere, 55 hour power reserve to go along with that. Now for our next watch here, we have Formex with the Field Titanium. So we had our more tool dive oriented watch. This is going to be more for the everyday type of format. And coming from a brand that I think is rising in the ranks in terms of hitting that really good sweet spot of value uh, and up performance and spec for the price. Now here, 
Hamilton did just recently unveil their titanium. I think this is a good alternative to the khaki field titanium watches uh, and doing it with some more fun flair and unconventional dial compared to the traditional format that Hamilton is going to go for. Now you don't necessarily get the same power reserve with the movement that's going to be the one drawback compared to something like Hamilton, but this comes with a lot of the up specification uh, that I think people would like to see. So you have 41 millimeter case, that case is coming in titanium with an up hardness of that case. Water resistance of 150 meters. Movement is gonna be an automatic Sleeta SW200. Wears like a true 40 with that 47.9 millimeter lug to lug. And I also like the different dial colors. This is compared to a general field watch. And I think we all know that under $1,000, many people are gonna often go for Hamilton, where Formex, I think, has allowed their point of differentiation to fall wear. But it also allows these watches to be different compared to the mainstays in this sub $1,000 price range that typically are going to be dominated by Hamilton field watches, is going to be the use of color or the splash of color. Uh, a lot of uh, different dial colors to choose from. You have green, then you also have this plum or purple dial that I think is very nice and cool. And then also some more conventional uh, dials like the black uh, that you can go for that still, even with the numerals and markings, does feel new and fresh uh, for a take on a modern field watch in 2022. And for our dress category for this hipster selection, I wanted to look at the Nomos Tangente uh, Platinum Gray. So this comes with the conventional format uh, of 35 millimeter case. You can also get a larger case variant as well, but I just love the way that 35 millimeter wears, where it's closer to a 36 to 37 millimeter dress watch, which I really do like. 43.1 millimeter lug to lug, 30 meters of water resistance, but the number one thing going for this watch uh, I think is happening. You have a thickness, which is great, but then you have that DUW 3001, which I feel is one of the better finished uh, movements that you're gonna find from an independent watchmaking perspective under $5,000. It looks the part, it is the part with its uh, proprietary swing system escapement uh, that you're getting here. This was really that step into that next tier of watchmaking as you started with the alpha manual movement. This is starting to get into some real uh, level of independent watchmaking. And then the finishing is great too. Uh, just uh, the glashuta waves across the bridges. You're getting some raised elements on that rotor and some engraving on those bridges. I just love the look of this movement. I've owned watches with this uh, movement inside of it. And it's one of those watches for around $3,000. When you flip this around, it does have that wow effect that many other brands I don't think can rival uh, out there on the market. So now for our next category, we have the Diver Fanatic. And I have two different divers that are going to, in total, equal $8,000. So I want a good way to look at both sides of the aisle. You want something that's more to the everyday option, and then you have something that's more to the tool or extreme dive watch fanatic. So the first one is going to be with the Tudor Black Bay 58 in bronze. Now you could not go for the bronze if that's not to your liking, but why I like the bronze is it was the introduction to a couple things. One, the bronze case in the 58 uh, format or any uh, format outside of the conventional 43 millimeter that was the first uh, to exhibit that bronze case for Tudor. This was unveiled in 2021 as a boutique edition, which is another drawback here, which might cause you to look in another direction at another dive watch rather than uh, this one or another uh, Black Bay, I should say. And there are plenty to choose from. Don't be uh, discouraged there. We all know that. It comes with the conventional 58 format, 39 millimeter case, thickness of 11.9, lug to lug of 47.5 with a 200 meter water resistance rating and the automatic Tudor MT5400 with that COSC certification. The other great thing about this watch is going to be the inclusion or actually the official introduction of that T-Fit clasp. So this is the modified clasp that's going to feature that on-the-fly adjustment. Previously, to get that on-the-fly adjustment with that micro-adjustment point without the use of a tool, you only had the Pelagos, which I think has one of the best clasps in all of watchmaking under $5,000. And with this watch, you have essentially the same level of flexibility in a slightly modified, uh, refined package. And this has been now making itself available in other watches from Tudor, which is great to see. And now for our other dive watch in this category, we have the EZM. 13. This is actually the EZM 13.1, if we're being specific. A 41 millimeter case, thickness of 15 millimeters, and a lug to lug of 47 millimeters. Uh, but really, what we're getting here is the combination of some dive watch capability. Uh, with that 500 meters of water resistance, magnetic protection, 
pushers and crown on the left side and a highly modified value 7750. So that's just not a base value 7750, which changes the 30 minute counter to a more useful uh, diving 60 minute counter. These are not screw down pushers, but what is really cool about this watch is you're able to actually use those chronograph pushers uh, while underwater and it's not going to allow water to get into the case to the same degree that you would have in pretty much every other uh, dive watch that would have this type of chronograph functionality in it. Now for our next persona, we have the perfect duo. So one sports watch, one dress watch to try to check off pretty much every scenario uh, and allow us to have the maximized uh, versatility that we might need. For the sports watch, I wanna look at the Breitling Super Ocean Heritage 57 edition. So this is going to look back to that original 1957 design. So what this is going to have is that bezel that's going to be oriented down towards that crystal. It's going to have that domed effect. This combination has been replicated by many uh, dive watches that would follow, but this was really the one that almost started this trend when you're when you're talking about the mass market. Price range just above $4,000 starting price, 42 millimeter case, really solid thickness here at 9.9 .9 millimeters, lug to lug of 46 millimeters, water resistance of 200 meters, and it is going to utilize a third-party caliber here with the ETA 2892. This is probably gonna to be too much uh, for some people, but I did wanna differentiate from some of the other dive watches that are commonly mentioned in this price range. And I think this is a sleeper and I just love the look and design of this watch. And now for our dress watch to be the perfect dichotomy with that Super Ocean, I was thinking Cartier and the Mustang Cartier XL. So this watch, now being available, 31 millimeter case uh, when you're talking about the distance across and then a lug to lug of 41 millimeters and a thickness of 8.4 millimeters. I would call this iconic for a variety of reasons. One just being the tank affiliation. And one thing that I really like about Cartier is they are able to represent the entire market of, of luxury when it comes to their offering. You have very basic watches like this that are gonna be just north of uh, $3,500, $3,700 for a list price. And then you have just these crazy skeletonized uh, watches from their Santos collection that are going to demand tens of thousands of dollars. So uh, they do a nice job. And there's a reason why Cartier now, in terms of looking at output and revenue last year, was actually number two when it came to the Swiss watch making industry. So uh, well done Cartier. And I think this is a big reason why is because they are able to address all parts of the market. And this is a great example of just getting a killer watch for south of $4,000. So now we have the formal collector for Persona 6. This is someone that really wants to key in on dress watches. And I have two here that I wanna pair with one another. First, I have the Omega Constellation. Now this is a line that I think many people overlook. I'm not the biggest fan of the modern constellation, just personally. I'm not this 19, late, late 1970s, 80s uh, griff claw design is not what I like when thinking of the constellation, but to each their own, I think these are still well-made watches and often overlooked and have some sporty upside uh, that doesn't allow them to be so pigeonholed into the dress category while still doing the job, of course. Uh, we do have a variety of styles to choose from. You're looking at a 41 millimeter case, 50 meters of water resistance, and also getting that Omega 8900 caliber on the inside. It does come with that blue ceramic bezel with Roman numerals and that Grand Fu white enamel. So really sharp. And when you have this in the hand, it does pop. Master chronometer certification here with that in-house 8900 movement. And then again, wide variety of dial colors to choose from. And then from the flip side, I wanted to get into a complication something more romantic, maybe something from the moon phase. Uh, so here I have the Raymond Weil Maestro moon phase. So when you look at moon phase watches in the price segment of around say a thousand to two thousand uh, dollars, I would say that there you don't necessarily have that many moon phases I think start to become more available around fifteen hundred dollars, two thousand dollars and then the amount of brands that are actually utilizing them and doing them well. Here you have a 39 and a half millimeter case thickness of 9.8 millimeters, lug to lug of 44 millimeters, water resistance 50 meters, and a Salita movement on the inside. But I really like the look with the Roman numerals, and then you have that kind of uh, wave serpent-like pattern with the finish of the dial. And they also have some different dial colors to choose from with that moon phase display uh, being available with that open aperture. And now for our final persona, we have the three watch collection. So we want the everyday, we want a dive watch, and then we want a dress watch here. So to start us off with the dive watch category, or more that tool watch category, I have the Doxa Sub 600T Pacific. So this is that Doxa Sub DNA, and then infusing it with uh, some other characteristics from that everyday perspective with its case silhouette, 
and just approach. You have $1,990 for the price here. Case size, 40 millimeters, so very wearable. Lug to lug dimension of 47.6 millimeters and a thickness of 14.2 millimeters. So it is rather thick, but the good news is it is going to the water resistance rating of 600 meters of this dive watch. This is a new model and it's based on a more obscure Doxa reference from the 80s, the 600T. And again, it does have some, of course, original connection to the Doxa sub but has more of an angular case design and then fusing it with that titanium case material with a Salita caliber to give you that everyday utility. Uh, and then of course, that down to dirty business that I think some people want from, uh, that are just fans with Doxa in general in this uh, category of watches. So now with the dive watch tool watch out of the way, I wanna then move over to your kind of everyday option. What's gonna give you the most just versatility in this collection? And I think that's what the Longines Spirits you could look at a variety of different case sizes, but I'm gonna look at the 37 millimeter variant for a variety of reasons. One, it's going to wear like a 38, and I think many people that are uh, looking for that Goldilocks zone for say a field watch or an aviation theme watch, I'd put this more into that aviation flieger style uh, category with some field watch type of uh, styling as well. It, it walks that kind of middle ground, uh, but that I would say is most commonly when you're talking about what most people like to see, 38, 39 millimeters, it seems like from the enthusiast market where they like it to be. And this is exactly where that's going to key into. 38 millimeters in actuality, even though that 37 millimeter case size is going to be what is proposed. A 44.9 millimeter lug to lug, which is a huge improvement from the previous variations. Uh, the problem with the previous variants was not just the fact that it did have an extended lug to lug, but the uh, when factoring in the end link, the end link design here is going to be changed. So it's gonna shoot down uh, down towards the wrist and taper and drape really, really well uh, at that uh, clasp and bracelet that is just phenomenal. One of the best in the price range. Uh, 100 meters of water resistance and ETA A31L11. That's a proprietary movement for Longines produced in collaboration with ETA with a 70 hour power reserve, COSC certification, sapphire crystal, this is just one of those watches now at 37 millimeters, I'm just really gung ho about because it removes the question of wearability for those that might like uh, smaller case sizes. And then it, and you look down the board, checks off the boxes, 100 meters of water resistance, great movement on the inside, COSC certified movement, sapphire crystal. I mean, it, it's a really solid watch and also looking the part, you have a variety of different dial colors to choose from. It's not going to look out of place except for probably the most formal of situations uh, that you might have to go to. And now for our final watch for this category of the three watch collection, we have the Grand Seiko SBGX. 347. So this watch is going to be at that entry level door of when you can start getting into Grand Seiko for the first time. Also going to be catered towards the dress side or that elegant side of their collection. 34 millimeter case, 10.7 millimeter thickness, a lug to lug of 41.5 millimeters, 30 meters of water resistance, and also having the GS9F61 movement on the inside. So this is a quartz movement. But I will add two things. One, it actually does look good if you ever actually wanna look at this movement. But the other thing here is a plus or minus uh, accuracy range of deviation of 10 seconds per year. So this is an incredible performance out of a course movement. Battery life is three years. And apart from that, you are getting a well-finished watch across the case. It is going to be more to that refined, elegant perspective, 34 millimeter case. So might be too small for some, but if you want something that's going to be that entry door for Grand Seiko, is going to have a course movement, but you are getting the full maximized upside of getting a course movement with that reliability and of course the accuracy to go along with it, this is where I think this could be a compelling option for some. But all right guys, that is my ways of building an $8,000 watch collection. How would you build your collection for $8,000? Leave a comment down below. Is there a persona here that you liked the most, that you didn't like the most? Love to see that as well. Also, be sure to check out that article looking at some of the best options for under $10,000. And while there, definitely check out the different watches we have for sale on teddyballstar.com. Full authorized dealer, 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. If you do wanna stay up to date with the content, be sure to hit the bell here. If you wanna see all of our new videos, that will send you a notification. Really do recommend that. Sometimes YouTube is a little crazy about that. And then follow along on Instagram so you can see some great photos of watches as well. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.